All right, if you're using a desktop environment like GNOME or KDE, then you're probably going to have a built-in application launcher. But if you're using something like a tiling window manager, then you're probably just going to have to set it up yourself. So for me, I've personally chosen Rofi right here. And this is basically what it looks like. So it's just a very simple, lightweight application launcher. You can type something in like Chromium here and launch it by pushing enter. And it's very easy to use, very simple to set up. So I really like it. It can also do a whole bunch of other stuff besides just launching applications. So for example, we can have it be a window selector. So if you want kind of something like an alt tab feature in your tiling window manager, you can use this to switch between different windows on different desktops. You can even do something like have it display a whole bunch of emojis for you and be able to copy one of these, which is kind of nice, I guess. But there's just a whole bunch of different things that you can do with Rofi. And so I'm gonna show you how you can use it and configure it in this video. Now, before we get started, I do wanna get the comparisons to D-Menu out of the way. So if you don't know what D-Menu is, then you can probably just skip this part of the video. But D-Menu is another similar program like Rofi. And it's another program that can be used as an application launcher or many different things. It basically can have all the same features as something like Rofi if you take the time to configure it. And I personally used D-Menu in the past. I don't really have anything against it, but I decided to start using Rofi just because Rofi is going to be much easier to configure and set up. So D-Menu is made by the Suckless software team, and I just don't really agree with their philosophy in that the less lines of code, the better the application will be, and the less documentation, the better too. I just don't agree with the philosophy at all, personally. If you really want to get the most out of D-Menu, you're just going to have to patch it to Kingdom Come and maybe just work through the source code and try to figure some things out yourself. For me, I would rather just have a functioning application that works the way I want. If you do prefer D-Menu, nothing wrong with that, but for me, I just personally prefer Rofi for those reasons. And just so you know, Rofi can do everything on D-Menu can, even showing a menu for some bash script I know that D-Menu is popular for doing that, but Rofi can do the same. You can set up Rofi's configuration to look the same as D-Menu if you prefer the look of D-Menu. But with that out of the way, that's why I don't personally use D-Menu anymore. But let's just get into how I use Rofi right here. So let me blow up this terminal a little bit. And you can install Rofi from the official repositories. I believe it's in all of them. For me, I installed it with Pac-Man. Rofi right here as you would imagine, but you can run it by running rofi-show, and then Rofi has several different modes. Let me just hit enter to show all the different modes that Rofi has. So the first one I'll show you is going to be run. Let's say Rofi show run, and this will be every script and every application that is in your path variable. So this is basically every runnable command on your system, and of course you can search through all this. I can search for GIMP, and that display is fine. But for me personally, this just has way too many useless commands on here, like the command left bracket. I'm probably never going to use that. I don't even know what it is, to be honest, but it is a command. But you probably don't want all these different things in your application launcher. So what you can do instead of just this is you can run Rofi dRun. And this will get all the applications, but only the applications with a desktop file. So basically whenever an application installs, it will also create a desktop file so that application launchers like this can find it. And so this is a much better list. It's basically just going to have all the applications you need and none of them that you don't. And you can search through this. And you can also just search for descriptions as well. So if I wanted an editor, maybe I don't remember the name of the program, but you can search for editor. As you can see, I'm getting an image editor, a code editor, and a video editor right here, just because these are all described as editors. So in the desktop file, it'll also have a description of it. So going through this list is very easy to find different programs. And also another nice thing that Rofi does is it will automatically put your most used ones on the top right here. So for me personally, I use GIMP the most. That will be on the top right here. If you do want to remove something from this list, you can push shift delete and it will remove it and it'll just remove it from the history. So of course you can still find it right here once I type it in, but it just won't be in your recent history right here. 
So this is probably the most useful out of all of Rofi's modes. Next I'll show you Window, which I already showed you, but this can basically tab through all of the windows that you have open on any different desktop or workspace that you're working in. Like I said, it's useful if you want an alt tab feature. A lot of people complain about window managers that they don't have some feature where you can see all of the windows at once. So this will give you the functionality if you want that. Me personally, I don't use it that much, but you can. So there's a few other things that you can do here. Now personally, I don't use these a lot, but you can get everything that you've ever SSH'd into. You can get all the key bindings. You can even use it as a file browser. I personally wouldn't do that, but you can check that out. And Rofi does actually have a lot of plugin support as well. So you can use it as an emoji selector and even as a calculator or something like that. This emoji right here, I have added in as a plugin. I'll probably leave a link to that in the description if you do want to add the emoji picker, but it's not there by default, just so you know. And finally, Rofi can also be used as a D menu replacement. So if you have some script and you want to feed it into Rofi just to select through a bunch of different options, so just as an example, let me grab all of the fonts that I have and then pipe them into Rofi-D menu. Then we have a big list of all of the different fonts I have here. I can search for something right here and then hit enter and it will return it. So this can be useful for some bash script if you want a menu to use. And the syntax is similar to D menus but not identical, so if you are porting your scripts over from dmenu to Rofi, just do keep in mind that there might be a few differences between them, but generally you can just use it as a drop-in replacement for dmenu, that is useful. So next let me show you how to configure Rofi. So you're going to want to create a file called .config slash Rofi slash config .rassi right here. And by default you're not going to have any of this, so let me just show you how it looks out of the box right here. So it doesn't look great to be honest. This is what you have. And you can select the basic theme if you want. Rofi has a few pre-built themes. None of them are really great, but let me just show you them in case you're interested. So that'd be Rofi-theme selector. And you get this nice little selector right here and you can maybe take a look at Grubbox theme. Maybe some of these look good to you. Personally, uh, I would use these as kind of a starting point. So if you want to make your own theme, you probably don't want to make it completely from scratch. So you can use these as kind of a starter theme. So personally, I would pick something that you like right here. And you can really get crazy with some of these. Like, you can have your background as a turtle if you want. I don't know why this is here, but it is. You can have a sidebar. You can even have something like D menu, of course, if you prefer to have these at the top. But if you're happy with any of these default themes, that's an easy way to get up and running with Rofi. But if none of these are really doing it for you, if you want to have your own custom theme, then you can do like I did and just look up somebody's configuration online. I'm sure you can just copy mine from my dot files as well. But if you don't want to do that, you can start from one of these themes right here. Let's see, they're in slash user, slash share, slash Rofi, slash themes. So let's say I wanted to use this blue theme as kind of a base to my theme. I would open that up and then you can just copy this into your config.rasi here and just change a few things. Now I'll go over what all of these are and what all of these do. So first off, let me just get my configuration back here. So in this config.rasi file, you're going to first want to have a configuration block right here. And the way Rofi configures this is kind of like CSS, if you've ever worked with that before. Then the syntax is going to be something similar to that. It's not going to be exactly that. So do keep that in mind. But a lot of this is going to look familiar if you do use CSS. And here at the top we're just writing a few basic configuration options right here. So this display dRun is basically saying whenever we run dRun. Let me just save this so that it actually works. So now it says applications right here because I put this right here. It's going to say windows if you open up window mode and then dRun display format. This will just get the icon right here. So we're getting an icon right here to the left. And of course the font is going to be which font we want to use for it. And Modi is going to be all the different modes that you want enabled. So not all of them are going to be enabled by default. So basically the ones that you're going to use, you're going to want to write in here and then just remove the rest. So personally, I only use these three. So that's what I would write right here. And then if you do want icons, you can push show icons right here and it will automatically try to get the default icon. 
So all these have icons that are included whenever you install the program. But if you want your own custom icon theme, I don't know if you guys can see this, but they are a different style, a more flat style to look better in my opinion. But if you want to, you can install some additional icon theme. I installed Papyrus. Uh, you can probably just install it in your package manager. I believe I did, what is it called? Papyrus icon theme right here. I installed this with Pac-Man, but I'm sure you can find it in any other package manager. And then you would just put the icon theme right here. So that's a nice way to get nice looking icons. And then below this, you're going to want to put in the theme. So you're probably going to want to have a separate file, maybe called theme.rasi inside your Rofi configuration directory. And then right here, you would write a link to that. So let's say slash home slash Eric dot config slash Rofi slash theme dot Rassi. And that would probably be something that you would write. And then everything here down below, you're going to want to paste into there. However, you can also have it in just one file like I have it right here. But if you want to keep it all in one file like me, then you're going to have to set this theme to slash dev slash null. Because if we delete this right here and then start it up, you're going to see that the default theme, it kind of bleeds over into my theme. So if you want to completely replace the default theme, you don't want to have any of the styles from the default, then you would just point the theme to slash dev slash null, and then the default theme isn't overriding what I have right here. But let's get into the theming. So right here at the top, we can write references for all the different colors. So you can just type in whatever you want right here. This could be called whatever you want, but I've just named it BG. And then you can put in all the different colors. So I have four different colors personally. That's enough for me, but you can do as many as you want. And then in order to use these colors, you're going to want to put this at sign right here and then the name of the reference right here. And this star right here, this basically is the universal selector for everything. So every single part of Rofi, I want the background color by default to be this BG color right here. I want there to be no border by default, no margin, no padding, no spacing by default. So this just applies this to everything. And by the way, if you want to have a transparent background, a lot of people do, you can add an additional alpha value to this. So 00, zero is going to be fully transparent and FF is going to be completely opaque, but you also want to have a compositor running as well. So Compton or PCOM in order to set the transparency. But if you have something like PCOM set up already, then you can say transparent right here and then we can run it and you can't see it here. But as you can see, we get a nice blur transparent effect. The blur is because I've already set it up in my uh, compositor. By default, it's just going to be completely transparent, I think. Maybe I'll do another video on PCOM and setting up this if you want. It can be a little bit confusing. But anyway, let's get back into this. And so down here, you're going to see a whole bunch of different elements, I guess you could say. And some of these are kind of obvious, like the window. And the width is going to be 45% of the screen size. So of course, if it changes to 100, you can guess what that would do. But you might be wondering what an element is, what element text is, what an entry is, input bar, list view. You might not know what any of these do. So what you can do is you can open up the man page for Rofi-theme right here and go down and actually find this right here. So this is kind of labeling every single part of Rofi. So you have the main window right here and the main box is going to be inside of it. The input bar is going to be what you type into. The entry is going to be the actual text box. The list view is going to be the list of all the different applications. And so if you're confused what any of these settings in the config mean, then you can just come into this man page right here and basically find everything that you need. So hopefully this will clear some things up for you. So now we've learned that the input bar is going to be this whole bar right here. The entry is going to be this text box right here. And something like the element is going to be each of these individual applications right here. And so you can guess what element selected is going to be. It's going to be the currently selected one. And so I would personally recommend copying this from somewhere else. Like I said, you can get it from my GitHub and then just going through and changing all the values as you see fit. Most of the values here are pretty self-explanatory like text color, padding, I'm sure you can guess. 
background color. You can also inherit these from their parents. So if you want the background color to be the same as his parent, then you can just write inherit element icon. I'm sure you can guess what it is. And also if you don't want every single one of the children to be visible. So by default, this will also tell you the number of applications that are in the list. Maybe you just want to have the prompt and the entry. So for me personally, what I've done is you can set the children right here. So for the input bar, I only want the children prompt and entry. Other ones you can leave out. So that's a good way to uh, remove some of the different elements in Rofi if you don't want all of them. And you can also set the lines for the list view. If you want less applications to be shown per page, let's say we only want four per page. So now we only have four right here. But this is just my basic Rofi setup. If you want a complete guide, again, just look in the man page for Rofi theme. This will basically have every single option that you could possibly need. So I would just check through this if you're confused about anything, you're not sure what one of these properties does, or you just want to see how to do something, check this out. I can't go over everything, but you can find it right here. And finally, if you want every single option available up here as well, so these are not all the configuration options, you can run Rofi dump config right here. And this is going to basically give you a complete list of all the different options that you can write for the config. So there's also the location configuration that you can add. You can add a Y offset, an X offset. You can set case sensitive to be true if you want. And there's just a ton of different options right here. And again, if you're unsure about what any of these options are going to do, then you can also check in the man pages. So this is going to be man Rofi right here. So if you wanted to see, for example, what case sensitive is going to do, then as you can see, it's going to, going to obviously start it in case sensitive mode. So if you want the complete guide on Rofi, it's all there in the man pages. The documentation is very good for this. So that's the basics on how to set up Rofi and configure it to look pretty nice. And once you've set everything up, then you're basically done. So this is something I use on an everyday basis. It's very useful to me. And once you get a nice configuration up and running, I'm sure you'll enjoy it too.